on those little two little things, squirt fuel. If you want to add fuel, just raise it. You want to make the, this is volume, okay? You want to make the volume smaller, you lower. So pretty much, this is that easy for the, end, for, the, for the end user, for you who are going to tune it for him. But let's say you have a great goofy combination and, you know, this end user cannot be, you know, sold a uh, thruster. He needs uh, a process, something with more tunability. You go to Gen 7. This box, in a year or two, if the end user says, I want to put turbo, I want to do more nitrous, whatever, you can send the box in, just the box. We, we flash it, we give you the right con cable, now you got Pro, Gen 7. You go from 35 screens to 144 screens. See, now that's intimidating. 144, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, you're like, okay, now what? Well, then you take it to an installer that knows what he's doing, that can tune it. System, you have no way of changing when the injector fires. Now you say, why would I change when the injector fires? Okay, when you adjust timing, what do you do? Especially if you have a, a possibility to, to do 3D timing. In other words, or 2D, when you tell it at 4,000, I want 36 degrees. At 8,000, I want 32. What you do? You put a curve, right? Because that's where the motor light. Same thing with the fuel. Why can't you tell the system when to fire the injector? Believe it or not, I have done things at the track. People don't even know it's in there. Even though it's right there in front of them, they don't touch it. I've been at the track where I said, like, the guy's like, I'm a tenth away from kicking that guy's butt, let's say. You know, he's like, okay, let me in for a second. I go in there, I ask him some questions. Basically, it's about cam. How big is the cam? What compression? And visually, you've got to visualize how long the runner is. Okay? And then I just try something. He goes out and he picks up a tank and goes, what the heck did you do? What I did is I came in with the target injector timing, and like I said, normally it fires 360 degrees before top dead center. I changed it. And then I, hopefully it'll work. There's no formula for this thing. If you actually, there's one thing about these systems. Every screen, if you're not sure about something, if you click anywhere on the screen, hit F1, it comes up with a help table for you. So you don't get lost, okay? And it tells you, for instance, three one version three one or lower, three two or, or higher, you know. So, so it kind of like helps you along, so you know what's going on with what you're doing. Now, in this particular gentleman's case, he's got a big cubic inch, 588 cube. And I know the cam was pretty large, and I saw the runner size, which is roughly it's a ton of right? but at the most probably eight nine inches. I took. From 5,300 up because it's useless below that on his. And I, uh, that's why I mean, those numbers change. RPM change as you increase RPM in the other tables. And I picked it up to 420, picked up a tenth. Picked it up to 480, picked up another tenth and a half. Two and a half tenths he didn't even know he had. When we pulled the motor out of the car, he put it on the dyno. We went back to the original tune and we made a pull. Then I said, let me, let me put what we did at the track in there. On a, this is on an engine dyno, 34 horsepower by changing when the injector fires. Three horsepower. He didn't, free. I mean, you didn't have to put anything up in the motor to gain 34 horsepower. All you did is change when the injector fired. I just did an LS1 before I came here. LS7, I'm sorry. About 5,300, or 5,000 in that case, because that, it was, we, end, we ended that run roughly at about 6,400. Above 5,000, uh, 5, it didn't like more than 3, 3, 360. So that's fine. You give an engine what it wants. Always remember that. Don't ever think that you know better than, uh, you know, than the engine. But below 5,000, I went up to 420, and the thing picked up roughly 20 foot pounds of torque. 
Now, this is just a street car. A 20 foot pound is huge. Makes it easy to drive, less throttle when you get out of that, you know, just driving in the street kind of thing. And definitely rip the tires apart when you're, when you're kicking. This is like no secret with us. Nobody else in the other companies gives you access to it. We do. The horsepower use it. The longer the runner normally, the shorter the number. On a uh, like a TPI, a GM TPI, normally you see uh, 200, 1800, 3600 at about 220, and uh, wide open throttle you might be at about 260, 270, you know, under 300. Shorter the runner, and depending on the cam, you go ahead and you crit crank the number up. And you always want to just try it on a dyno, do before and after kind of a run, just watch what the numbers are. Say, so I've picked up here, but not here, so you change the number the other way. It's very, it's very interesting how many people, once I, because I do a lot of these classes, the classes I do roughly last about eight hours one day, and then we do dynos the next day. When I show them what it does on the dyno in front of their eyes, they're like, I, I can't believe we've never messed with that. These guys have been doing this for a long time. So you got to experiment. And again, it's, it's, I can't sit here all day and we go through all this stuff, but this system has a lot to offer for the money. Thruster is $1,200, roughly. Complete, you might spend $1,350 jobber. Gen 7 uh, starts at about $1,700, $1,800, Jay. And if you do a thruster upgrade later on, it's $600. So the guy with an F-17, $1,800, just sell him a regular thruster. Okay, we got a few minutes left, so uh, before I'm going to let uh, uh, my, my buddy Dave over there. But before I let him up here, I want to just talk about one thing, and uh, that's ICM. ICM. We just came out with ICM. It's actual an ECM. It is an ECM, just like Jet Seven Thruster. The difference is there's no fuel. If you look over here, there's, a, there's an area right there. That's because that's where the fuel is going. There's no fuel. This system is designed for a carburetor engine, whether it's an older engine, a new engine. What I mean by new is coil on plug, LS, Ford, uh, three valve, four valve, two valve, four six, Chrysler Hemi, the new Hemi. This will run anything. One of the things that we have with this, and it's coming out within the next six to 12 months, because we're testing it right now is we are going to move forward, uh, unlike all the other uh, ignition companies, we're going to get rid of the 4X signal. In other words, you can still run if you want a crank trigger with four magnets on it. How about if I give you a 36 minus 1? I just ran a 540 cubic inch with that 36 minus 1, big cam. We all know what happens at idle, right? You're trying to set the timing, you think it's jumping everywhere, you got to hold it in one hand, try to you know, see what the timing is at about 2,000, 3,000 RPM. That goes away. 36 minus 1, I don't care how big the cam is, that balancer is just sitting there. It accelerates the motor that much faster. It enhances the way the carburetor runs on, on, on a carburetor engine. It does things that nothing else on the market right now does. It's got five stages of power adder slash nitrous, you can use it for whatever you want. Each stage of the first three has pulse width mo uh, modulation. Guys, big converter or the tires keep breaking loose, you can literally pulse with the solenoids. So you can nice and get up, take off nice and easy. 64 channels, log it, day log it on board. It logs it internally. It's got built-in delay boxes. You don't have to spend $500 for a denominator box, it's built in. It can fire a single coil, like I said, or eight, or eight coils on an older car, uh, 65. Camaro, I should say uh, Corvette, whatever. So it does every every everything it does, every every command that it has to do.